the influence of godly citizens. Uh, before we get into the word, I, I want everybody to look at me. I don't, I never come here. I, I love, first of all, I love playing games. I mean, I am a fun person to be with. You know, and, and when I play, I play hard. When I play, I play to win. Amen. I play Scrabble. I play words with friends and, and my, my, my younger grandkids. Papa, want to play Scrabble? I said, yeah. And I kicked them. <laughs> they said, Papa, you need to go easy on me. I ain't going easy on you. But because over the past year or so, I've been playing hard on, on my 12 and 13-year-old grandsons, now they're starting to beat me. <laughs> that's okay. Because that's why I did what I did. I've said this before. I don't want my kids to stand in my shoes. I want them to stand on my shoulders. I want them to go higher and further than I've ever gone. That's my heart. That's my passion. So you're here this morning, not by chance, not by accident. This is part of God's divine plan. Here at the Revival Center, for some of our new people here, yeah, I love you and I want to encourage you, but I still talk about sin. I still let you know that there's a heaven to, there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with believers, believers that, that I love God, but it's okay for me to sin. And I'm telling you, come out from among them, be separate, so you can be influencers in your nation. Amen. That's why I do what I do. If you look up the word godly you'll find out it means to have to have the characteristics of god so we strive for godliness the bible says a great deal about godliness tell the godliness will bring us great gain that's the bible says and that god has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness okay everybody look at me just because you you go to church does not make you godly we need to go to church so the word of God can be preached and so you can uh, see some baby dedication, see some baptism. You know, we need to be in the house of God to see that stuff, but we need to hear that God is challenging me to, to move toward godliness. Okay? That is, not, that is not a destination. It's a journey. Okay? And it is my job and it is your job as a brother and sister of Christ to uh, uh, cause each one of us to move towards godliness. I really, I, I should be able to say this to believers without an offense when I see you caught up in the sand. Say, brother, you, you can't keep doing that because that doesn't look like God. Hello? Without worrying about whether people are going to like it or not. Okay? Because I, I am not up here to make friends. I'm not up here to make converts. I'm up here to make disciples. The Bible didn't say go into all the world and make converts. He said make disciples. Follow me as I follow Christ. I was, I was reading this, this, this verse here out of the Living Bible. And it says the good influence. We'll talk about citizens here in a moment. Well, it says the good influence of godly citizens cause a city to prosper. But the moral decay of the wicked drives it downhill. Say it again, it's Proverbs 11, verse 11. I was talking to someone, and they were saying, a lot of times when I give a scripture verse, sometimes I, because I'm so, I'm so driven, I just kind of move through it real quick. So, you know, I'm going to do it the old, take your Bibles and turn to such and such a passage, because I want you to get this. The good influence of a godly citizen causes a city to prosper, but the moral decay of the wicked drives it downhill. So we should have a desire to want to be moved toward holiness. Yeah. Not just toward the church, but toward holiness. I, I wish every married man in here would do what I've been calling you to do. Stand up and be a man and, and prophesy over your wives and your children and, 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 and pray, not, not just pray over them, but prophesy to them, call them forth. Why, why, why do I do that? Because, men, I'm trying to move us to godliness. Men, look at me. The closer we move to godliness, 
the less godlessness we will get out of our lives. I'm talking to men all the time. Pastor, but I'm struggling with this and I'm struggling with that. And they tell me what they're struggling with. And I understand the struggle. But I'm going to tell you something. The more godliness we move in, the less the battle will be. Come on, somebody say amen. I, I'm, I, know, I know I'm speaking truth to you. And then the word citizen. The word citizen, if you look it up, it is someone that has sworn an allegiance to a city or to a state or to a nation. And when we came, when, when, when we gave our lives to Christ, we swore an allegiance to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Amen. When we, when, 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 when we, when we say Christ come into our life, that was not just a religious statement. We were saying, God, he, here's what I want you to know. I've made up my mind that I'm going to bring my life in alignment with the Word of God so I can be blessed and so I can prosper. As Pastor Dorothy said earlier, you, we, people have a struggle with the word prosperity. You have a struggle with because of that because you don't even know what prosperity is. Prosperity really, as a matter of fact, if you look at the word prosperity, it will, it will say to, uh, to, be, to, to succeed or to thrive. Then it says, especially financially. That's what it says. But as you keep reading, you'll find that prosperity is not an outward thing, but it's an inward thing. Okay. There are millionaires that have millions of dollars in the bank, but they have no peace. So they are, we stand back, we see the cars they drive and the clothes they wear and the jewelry that they have. And we, we, we say, boy, they're extremely prosperous. Not necessarily. They have a lot of stuff, but they don't have God. And if they don't have God, their stuff means nothing. What does a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So we need to swear allegiance to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I, 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 really, I want to read the rest of those verses. I want to read the next two verses. And I'm not really going to so much uh, uh, talk about them a whole lot. But the first verse, I want to read it again. The good influence of godly citizens causes a city to prosper, but the moral decay of the wicked drives it downhill. Verse 12. To quarrel with a neighbor is foolish. And a man with good sense can hold his tongue. Hello. Some of you need to learn how to just shut up. Hello. Yeah. Verse 3 says, I mean, verse 13 says, A gossip goes around spreading rumors, while a trustworthy man tries to quiet them. There's, there's, there's some good biblical principles here. But we want to talk about the influence. All of, us, all of us need to make an impact, an influence on our world. Okay. I want to influence everyone I come around from a, from a real good standpoint. I want people to know me as a trustworthy man. For some of our visitors here, that's why we have a countdown. We start at 10 o'clock. Because you need to understand that I'm trustworthy with time. Hello? That's important to me. Ah, we just kind of, we, we just kind of, we just kind of. No, you don't do God. You don't do God's business like that. I want to prosper in everything that I do. We're supposed to be the catalyst to pros to prosper our cities. Let me just talk about. Let me, you know, the influence of godly citizen prospers cities. Everybody, look at me. If, if that's true, and it is because the Word of God says it's true, if godly influence prospers cities, then God, godly influence will prosper your job. Godly influence will prosper your family. Godly influence will prosper your children. Godly influence will prosper the body of Christ. So I'm finding that it is, it is godly influence influences that makes a major impact on everything that we do somebody say amen, amen. come on it makes an impact in everything we do a good influence of godly citizen changes cities changes nations we're the catalyst of to, to prosper the cities 
I really wish we understood and knew the potential of our power. I wish we uh, could understand uh, what it means to serve God in a very prosperous position. I got, this is just me, and I'm, and I'm working on it. But I, personally, I think our house, wherever you live, should be the best-looking house on the block. Anybody can be average, but your house is not an average house. It belongs to God. You are the, you are the caretakers of what belong to God. You know, this is a dormant season for our grass and, you know, and, and all my neighbors, I love my neighbors, but all my neighbors, they, they, all, they, they've just let their yard go and, and everything's dried up in the middle of the summer. And we don't, we don't have nothing big and fancy, but we love it and, and it's good. Did you girls have a good time yesterday? Huh? Yeah, thank you, dear. But I'll tell you, during the middle of the summer, we got the greenest grass on the street. I've had neighbors come and go, how do you keep your grass so green? You, yep, water, but I tell you what, I prophesy over it. I speak to my ground. God, this is your ground. Lord, gr this is an average green. This needs to be green, green. That's really what we should be doing. See, some of you, know, some of you don't know what's happening. Some of you were, you came in here, and the very man, I know you came in, I started prophesying over you. I started asking God to wake you up on time. I asked, I asked God to bless your jobs abundantly so you can be better tithers. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm straightforward. One prayer that, that, that we pray, and then we haven't got to this point, I asked God, Lord, you know what? I would just love to be able to tithe $10,000 a week. How many, how many wouldn't mind that? That means God's going to bless you with $100,000 a week. Do you think you can live off that? That's, that's my prayer. Oh, we, we, to that point, we haven't got to that point, but I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm watching, I am watching what God is doing. Godly influence will cause a city, a nation, a church, a family, your job, your parenting. It will cause you to prosper. It will change your whole mindset. Glory to God. The godly, the righteous, they pay attention to what's happening around them. The godly, the righteous, they pay attention to what other people are saying. You know, I had a chance to have lunch the other day with Alan. He and I were sitting at a booth and we were carrying on, carrying on conversation. Just here and I. No one even could hear it. We were whispering. We just, but there was a booth, three or four down there. I mean, and this lady, was, I could tell you everything about her. <laughs> she was loud and everything. Matter of fact, we were having fun because she was talking, and I was, at every, I was answering everything that she said. <laughs> the godly and the righteous. They pay attention to what's happening around them. I don't, and I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I, I got, everybody look at me. I want you to get this. If you are people of God, it's time to obey God. Come out from among them and be separate. Tr quit trying to shake up a holy and sin together and think it's okay. It is tainted. It is poisonous. It is not, it is not going to help you get further down the line. It's going, to, it's going to put a wall between you and God. And if a wall between you and God, you're going to miss out on spiritual and biblical prosperity. God has set up his kids to have a prosperous voice, to listen to a prosperous voice. The godly and righteous, they pay attention Life in itself can be very hard and very difficult. And wickedness prevails, seems like, on every side. And there's destructive forces that's looking to destroy the greatness in men and women of God. Trying to pull us, seduce us into certain things. I got a call and, 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 and said, you know, have we got any, any of the PPP money or, or a small businessman? Loan? And I said, no, we'd love to be a great church, but I, I just can't do it because, you know, I am not trying to bring the government into this. I'm going to tell you something, Who, whoever you receive money from, they've got hooks into you. Sorry, I know I'm, I'm probably stepping on some toes here, but you need to get this. 
so we need to be obedient to God. I want to pay attention. I want to see what's happening around me. I've got this little idiosyncrasy, and maybe because, you know, I, I love old-fashioned Westerns. Anybody like Westerns? Oh, good. We're good then. I, 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 yeah, I can sit and watch Westerns all day long, and, you know, and, and oh, Clint Eastwood, oh, yeah, I, I, I go them all. You know, and, and, and every place I go, and, and you know, and it's, it's an idiosyncrasy of mine, I guess, and, you know, um, and it's funny, I, you know, Lou and I were kind of like the same, so we kind of look out for each other's back, but we never want to sit with our back to the door. Huh? <laughs> now, if I got a mirror right in front of me here, that's, that's, why, that's, that's, that's how Doc Holliday did it, you know. Had a big old mirror, and he could see what was, so I'm good with that, you know. Um, because I want to pay attention. I want to pay attention. Everybody say pay attention. We need to pay attention to what's happening around us and what people are doing and what people are saying because everyone that's smiling in your face ain't your friend. Just because they're telling you good stuff, it is not a godly influence. Just because they go to church is not a godly influence. Just because you sit under certain ministries, it is not necessarily a godly influence. My passion, and I'm not even acting like I've always arrived, but I'm, I, work on, I work on myself every day. I want to be a godly influence before the body of Christ. Someday I've got to stand before God and give an account of what went on in the house. So we need to raise the standards. We need to shut down the ungodliness, raise the standards of God, and, and let the goodness of God, let the goodness of God keep moving us to repentance. We're supposed to be ambassadors to the city. We're supposed to be ambassadors to the city. This, that's, that's my prayer. That's my prayer that the, eventually the word's going to go out. Those people at the Revival Center, they are such godly people. They're not trying to cut corners. They're not trying to cheat anybody. They, they, they just seem like they have such godly principles. That's my passion. That's my heart. But that only happens as we move closer to godliness. My heart breaks to what the church, to what the church has done in 2020, 2021. We've raised a culture of believers. They have very little fear of God, but they got a ton of fear as far as the world is concerned. And that's sad. That grieves, that grieves the heart of God. We need to pay attention who's around us, what people are doing, what people are saying. Matter of fact, any of your notes, you might want to write this down. I, 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 just, I just thought this was... This was so good. Maybe it was just good for me. But I think there's three people that we never want to forget. The godly should always be surrounded. I mean, be aware of their surroundings. They should learn who and what's impacting their world. Three people that I don't want you to ever forget. Number one, those who helped you during difficult times. Second, those who left you during difficult times. Thirdly, those who put you in difficult times. Amen? We need to pay attention because you were talking about godly influence. Those that have helped us in difficult times, most of them are godly influential people. They don't want anything from us. They just want to raise us up and, and watch us glow and watch us progress and watch us do something substantial. We need to surround ourselves with those people. I'll tell you what, I, in some aspects, I'm a very weak person. Because I want to surround myself with people that are stronger than me. People that know how to pray better than me. People that know how to preach better than me. I want to surround myself with those people. Because I want them to raise me up, raise me up to a level that I've never been to. Glory to God. I look forward to do that. 
Three people I want you to forget. Those that has helped you during difficult times. And some of you, under the sound of my voice right now, someone, the Lord just brought somebody to your mind, and you, you, need, you, need, you need to start making intercession. I'm not talking about even local people. I'm not talking about in recent days. Someone helped you 15 or 20 years ago. They really made a real impact on your life. God is saying you, really, you need to start praying for them now. Secondly, those that left you during difficult times. We used to say, before I got saved longer, a friend with weed is a friend indeed. Hello? And then when you don't have more weed, they're gone. If you imagine, you, there's a lot of people, just because you got money, you got all these people around you, and then when you run out of money, they're gone. They left you during difficult times. You helped them out when they were high and dry, but then you got high and dry and you can't find them anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, the, I saw Solomon said, why do you want them back? We don't want them back, but I'm going to tell you, our ungodly nature will always bring them back into our life because ungodliness does not want godliness. Godliness will bring us to a point of conviction that we are changed. I've made up my mind. I don't want to be average anymore. I don't want to just exist. I really need to know the presence and the power of Almighty God. Can I get an amen? amen. Are you following me this morning? I, I, really, I really want to walk through this, 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 this passage here. The, the good influence of godly citizens will cause a city to prosper. I want you, everybody look at me, I want you to prosper. You have never met a preacher in your life more, more passionate about your prosperity. And I am not talking about your stuff. I'm talking about the, the, the man, the woman on the inside just really growing and developing. I'm, I'm talking about prosperity that, that you finally get your laughter back. You get your, you get your peace back. All that heaviness has been upon you for years, all of a sudden it's gone. Why? Because now I'm living under prosperity. I'm living under the, the blessed hand of God. That's what God wants. Yes. So pay attention to those who left you. As this church has gone through years and we've struggled at times and it seemed like when I was, I was at the lowest of our ministry, I would get phone calls, invite me to Texas or someplace else to go pastor a church. And I'm this close to saying yes. But, I, but I, I've missed out on God before. And I said, no, I can't walk on out on God God because God was with me during my difficult time. I am not going to leave my present assignment to go into an assignment that's unknown. Here is where God has positioned me. And I want to start walking in the supernatural blessings of God. That's, you know, if you've been around here for uh, any length of time, I've said this so many times. I want you blessed to the point that your neighbors are thinking you're doing something illegal. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I, dr I, dr I drive up my yard with my, you know, two, 2005 van, you know, it, it runs and it's paid for it, don't, so don't judge me, okay? <laughs> but all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I, I, drive, up, I drive up in the yard with a, with a 2022 Escalade. <laughs> I guarantee my neighbors will be going, what's that preacher doing? I want to walk in the blessings of God. I've, I've shared this, 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 pet, this before, but I don't, I don't mind sharing it. I'm, I'm an open book. Years ago, people wanted to bless me with stuff. We pastor a small church in Northern California. They wanted to bless me with stuff. And my attitude, oh, no, I can't. I can't take that. One guy was going to give me a chocolate brown Cadillac. It's a pretty new one. I couldn't take that because I was pastor of a small church. If, I, if I'm driving around in a brand new Cadillac, you know, uh, they would think harsh of me. <laughs> let, me let me even take you a little bit further. <laughs> if, if I'm running around in a brand new Cadillac and you know, I like to dress up and I got me a white wife, I look like a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm talking about. Brother Don, pray for me. 
But you know, hey, hey, you, you're laughing, but that's real. And I said, I can't do that. And I was going to be getting blessed with, with a real nice watch, and I was afraid, I, you know, I, I couldn't do that because what people were going to think. And one day the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and, the, and God, the, my, my daddy, my father said, Son, I want to bless you, and every time I want to bless you, you're more concerned about what people are going to say than what, what I'm saying. And I walked away from the blessing, the prosperity of God. Probably some 10 years or so ago, I, I'd preached, a, I'd preached a, uh, a revival in Texas, and, and I was coming back on the plane. I was adjusting my watch, and, and the stem broke off my watch. You know, and it was no big deal because I figured, you know, t when I get back to Paso, all that, I'd go down to Kmart and get me another one, and I did. I, I went down to Kmart, and I'm going inside. This guy that I knew that used to live here in town who, who was a millionaire, but, I, but I, I'd known him for years, and, and I said, Steve, I said, I miss you, man. Where you been? He said, I, I had a stroke a few years back, and I moved to Cayman Islands. And he says, and uh, would you pray for me? I said, of course. It was a word in front of Kmart, and I'm doing my thing. He went in, and I went in. and Oh, he said, what are you here for? I said, I, said, I need to get a watch. I said, my watch broke. You know, so see what they got here. And he wouldn't start. I came, we, came out, came, we came out about the same time. He said to me, he said, uh, Bishop, he said, did you find a watch? I said, no. I said, I'll go to, I'll go to Walmart. I'll find one. And he said, don't worry about a watch. He said, after you left, I thought about it. He said, come, come back to my office tomorrow. He said, I got a whole drawer full of watches. I said, well, that's nice. Next day I showed up, and he had this real nice Seiko watch. Brown leather band. And that thing would look good on me. You know? And he said, this is the watch I was going to give you. I said, oh, Steve, that was all. He said, no. He said, Holy Spirit dealt with me. He said, a few years ago, he said, I bought this watch. He said, it's a Tag Hauer watch. Well, see, you guys are smarter than me because I, 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 had, no, I had no idea what a Tag was, you know. And we got talking. He said, I'm not bragging by any means. He said, but this is a $4,000 watch. I'll open my mouth and say, give me the Seiko. <laughs> At that moment, the Holy Ghost said, no, God, your father, glory to God, allowed him to buy it, let him wear it for a few years, but when he bought it, your name was on it. Yeah. Glory to God. So the past 10 years, I've been wearing this Tag Heuer watch. Not because I think I deserve it. Everybody look at me. But my daddy, Abba Father, wanted to bless me. Yes. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, I'm passing that on to you. God wants to bless you. Quit interfering with the blessings of God. Quit being disobedient because you are withholding the blessings of God. My, my, my. For our visitor here, you get the truth from this pulpit whether you like it or not. Let me show you some biblical foundation about the blessed life. And Pastor Dorothy touched on a few of them today, but the book of Psalm, chapter 25, verse 13. Psalms 25, 13. His soul shall abide in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. Wow. His soul will abide in prosperity in the blessings of God, and his children will inherit the land. Glory to God. Hey, this is Bible, folks. I'm not making this stuff up. Proverbs 28, verse 25. An arrogant man stirs up strife, but he who puts his trust in the Lord will prosper. I trust God. Pastor, how, how's this stuff going to work out? I have no idea. But I trust God. What are you going to do about such and such? I, I ain't going to do nothing about it. It's God's problem. But I'm going to trust God. I don't care what you think. I'm going to trust God. I'm not responsible for what goes on in your house. 
I'm responsible for bringing forth the, the, the unadulterated word of God. You've got to make a decision on it. And if, if you want to mix ungodliness with godliness, that is your business. But you are short-circuiting the blessings of God in your life. Pastor Dorothy said, the only person out of, out of 49 years of ministry, the only person I've ever heard that complained about tithing or non-tithers. Yeah. People that tithe, they never complain. You know why? Because they've learned how to walk in the blessings of God. Yeah. The only one that I've said, the, the, the only one that I've ever heard say, oh, every time I go to that church, talk about money, is the people that don't want to be a blessing to God. I tell people, a lot of people want to give God a lot of credit, but they don't want to give God no cash. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 21. Adversity pursues sinners, but the righteous will be rewarded with prosperity. Isn't that good? <laughs> Adversity seeks out sinners. Adversity is looking for you. Bondage is looking for you. Struggling is looking for you, but those who put their confidence and they, 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 they desire to have, be righteous before God, God says God will reward them with blessings. Wow. The good influence of godly citizens will cause Pastor Robles to prosper, will cause the Tascadero to prosper, will cause San Luis Obispo to prosper, will cause San Miguel to prosper. It just goes on and on. But it's based upon godly citizens. Psalm uh, chapter 1, verse 3. He will be like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields fruit in its season, and the leaf does not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. I mean, there, 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 there's some people that they're just walking around. I mean, I, I, I know men that they can fall in a sewer and they'll come out smelling like a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> they're just blessed. How come that worked for you? <laughs> well, I trust God. How would you come up with that great idea? I have no idea, but I just trust God. Everybody look at me. I, want, I, I am not saying put your trust in Pastor Gabe as much as I would hate to, but I will let you down. Why? Because I am a man. But there is a man that's a man that's a man-man, and his name is Jesus. Glory to God. There's a king that sits on the throne, and he will not back down. He will stand by his word. If you will obey God, God will cause you to war operate in supernatural blessings. Amen. Glory to God. I like what the scripture says. And the blessings of God shall overtake you. I like that. Yeah, I preached a message some time ago that I entitled, Being Mugged by God. You're just walking in faith. You're walking down the street, minding your own business. And blessings just overtake you. Yeah. You become, you become a blessing magnet. You just, you're walking down all of a sudden. Yeah. And all, all the stuff just, just, a, just attaching to you. You don't know why. You just know it's God. Believers need to have such strong moral character. They need to be the moral compass, if you will, the moral anchor to our cities. The truth is, that's why we live where we live. Because God has positioned you there to be a moral compass, a moral anchor to that city. And we need to influence our cities in righteousness. Wow. Let me wrap this up with this. Citizens. We're not aliens. If you've given your life to Jesus, 
And that's predicated on the if. Just because you go to church don't mean you got this. If you give your life to Jesus, you became no longer a citizen of darkness. You stepped into the citizenship of light. Glory to God. And light is powerful. Light's powerful. Scientists are trying to, fi they're really figuring out about light now. And the, it's amazing how much time we get into it. The, uh, our, our science and our government, they don't they're, they're understand sight and sound. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's why, they're, that's why they, you, you have a problem going to your body and they bounce sound off it. They want to find out what's going on or they'll take an x-ray and they're trying to expose it to light. We need to understand there, that your daddy is the essence of all light. That's why he said, let there be light. And out of his innermost being, whew, light just exists. We're citizens no longer of darkness. We're citizens of light. We are citizens of heaven. I used to be a citizen of hell. Glory to God. But now I'm a citizen of heaven. My father, my father, my father used to be a liar. But now my father is truth. Glory to God. Now we're citizens of heaven. And because I'm a citizen of heaven, I'm going to get heaven's gifts. Glory to God. I get the blessings of heaven. I know some of you probably think I'm weird, but I tell you what, I, w I want everything in my life to get blessed. I've, I've learned the gift of the prophetic. I've learned the gift of faith. Glory to God. And everybody look at me. It is not faith in my faith. It is, it is faith on, on, on the word of God. I'll tell you, if, if, if it's in here, it is absolute truth. Glory to God. So we stand upon the principles of God. So I'll tell you something. If there's something that you don't have, if God can't find it, God will make it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There, there have been times, Pastor Dothery, there were times we were just up, I mean, really up against it, and we didn't know how we were going to pay the bills. You know? And I don't have my wallet. I, mean, I take my wallet out to an empty wallet. And I just prophesy to it. Wallet, you are my servant. You know I got to pay my bills. In the name of Jesus, produce. All of a sudden, God starts opening up doors and gets productive. Path of Dor Dorothy does a lot of teaching on understanding. Tool. Everybody say stewardship. stewardship. Okay, that is not money. That is you saying I'm responsible for everything that belongs to me. Uh, in other words, I am responsible for the city that I live in. I'm, I'm responsible of the government that I live in. And, that, and the government I live in is not the government in Washington. Glory to God. The government I live in is upon his shoulders. Glory to God. And with him there is no, the, there, there, there's no end of his peace. But Pastor Dorothy has said for a long time, and some of, you, some of you need to understand this. We have a lot of people in the house from time to time and we have a dishwasher. I used to be it. <laughs> There's you too. Yeah. Okay. But Pastor Dorothy, no, she, she has a dishwasher. And she understands, watch her. She understands that that dishwasher is one of her servants. What a mindset. So she tells her servant, dishwasher. All right, I'm going to put some dishes in you. You better handle your business. And they do. And they're, listen, 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 listen. She understands that her wash machine is her servant. I'm a steward of that wash machine. So you better serve me well. She understands that her dryer is one of her servants. Yeah. She understands stewardship. So she is stewarding that which God has given her to to allow her servants to work. Everybody look at me. Your dollars and cents is your servant. You need to learn how to make your money work for you. Quit letting it be your master and start letting it be your servant. Become a good, good influence. 
over the dollars and cents. Why? Because God wants you blessed. God, God, God wants you blessed. My in-laws, my father-in-law was a janitor all his adult life. <laughs> Raised four kids. He didn't make much money. We talk about a man that loved God. I was in the ministry. He made me feel guilty every time I came in his room. He was reading his Bible. I didn't read my Bible that much. But every time he came, every two weeks when he got his paycheck, and I saw this very moment we got, well, I, right before we got married probably, I walked in and Martha would get his check. She'd look at it. They used to go to Paradise Assembly of God Church. She'd pull her check, but she Paradise Assembly of God Church, and she'd write $200. She took that out of her account immediately because that belonged to God. And he raised his family on $1,800 a month, paid all the bills, paid his mortgage. At the end of the month, they always had money left over. Their cars, honestly, their cars never broke down. They got 60,000 mile tires that would go 120,000 miles. They didn't know how it worked. It worked because when the children of Israel walked across the desert for 40 years, their shoes didn't wear out. Yeah. I love my dad immensely. My dad was a preacher, but my, but, but my dad did not believe in the principles of tithing. I don't, I don't, I don't get it, but he did. His car is always broke, always broke down. He bought a brand, brand new car. It wasn't very many months later that in Fresno, someone stole his car out of the driveway. They never found it. Then he bought himself a nice Jaguar. It was a beautiful thing. One day just sitting on the street for no reason whatsoever, it just blew up. I mean blew up. Not, not just set on fire. It just blew up. You know? And... My folks just never had. I, even though my dad, my dad was, my dad was a very hard worker. My mom always, my mom always stayed home. She raised the kid. My dad was a hard worker. I have to give him that. You know, we, we dad always provided, but it was never enough. I'm gonna wrap this up with this. I learned a principle here that I want you to get a hold of. If you hoard what belongs to God, you'll never walk in divine prosperity. But if you believe God and you're obedient to God, God will move you to a whole nother level. Yeah. <laughs> Remember I told you earlier, I want, God, I want God to bless you to the point that you never think you're doing something illegal? You know, one of, the, one of the local butcher shops down here, every so often they have extra meat, and they call me, and they said, they said Bishop, I, we, we got all this extra meat. So I went down, and I don't know how many cases of, of meat, and we put it on the table, and we separated what it was. So we called a bunch of folks in our church and people in our neighborhood. Yeah, oh, did you come over and get some of it? Yeah, yeah, you know. And, and, all, and all of a sudden, people started driving into our driveway, not getting out of the car. I was taking them stuff, and they were driving out, I can imagine my neighbors going, what in the world? <laughs> it's, called, it's called the blessings of God. It's called blessings of God. I know I'm being arrogant here, but you are in the right place at the right time. I believe the supernatural blessings of God are going to flow over your body physically. I believe we're going to see miracles happen in the house. I think we're going to see cancers run away from here. <laughs> Glory to God. I believe God's going to salvage what the enemy has tried to destroy. I think we're going to see marriages that are going to blossom and become powerful. I believe that. Anyway, we're going to pray. So why don't you read that with me out loud? Come on. The good influence of godly citizen causes a city to prosper. One more time. The good influence of godly citizens
causes a city to prosper. Praise God. That's going to overflow into the house that you live in if you let it. Praise God. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. I don't know where you're at this morning. If you haven't given your life to Christ, you need to take care of that. If you're here this morning and you're not sure whether you're saved or not, you don't get saved by joining this church, but you do get saved by asking Christ to come and live and dwell in your life. If that's where you're at, right where you're staying, by that raise your hand, you say, Pastor Gabe, I need prayer this morning. I need to get some things straight between me and God. Is there anybody in the house? All right, I don't see any hands raised. You're here this morning and you need a physical touch of God in your body. I believe God has already caused you to prosper in that aspect. I believe that arthritis, that spirit of arthritis, is shaking right now because that spirit of arthritis has heard the name of Jesus. Those migraine headaches that give cause you restless days and sleepless nights is afraid right now what's getting ready to happen. There's healing in the name of Jesus. Somebody on the side of my voice right now, you've been dealing, dealing with some really breathing problems and lung problems. I declare of you right now where the right should touch shall prosper. You come in faith. I want to just lay hands on you. And we're going to believe God. You're this morning. I'm not going to prolong this. I'm not going to prolong this. You need prayer this morning. I want you to come right now. And we're going to pray together. Anybody in the house?